cast the Mandalorian. <laughs> central nervous systems are like, oh my God. Um, it, 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 to describe the journey is, is, is practically impossible. I, I wouldn't be here meeting all of these amazing people. You need to go backstage. <laughs> I mean, it's insane. It's exhausting. <laughs> um, and, and to be in this kind of company that, that, that some that have been there from the beginning and that continue to um, emerge and I'm gonna just stop talking because I want to make it about um, you doing great everybody else <laughs> yeah That's Emily amazing. Emily's jumping because obviously as the armor you you've really brought a I was having a little bit of a freak out that I've tried to keep under control because today like 10 minutes ago was my first time ever meeting Amy and she doesn't know that <laughs> that I, I, I'm freaking out inside. And my dream, I like know. John, is to have a scene. Here's the reason I'm in armor and pelimoto. Um, so that's gonna be happening, right? Sure. Yeah, so. I wear helmets anything. Yeah, I'm gonna make her a helmet. Good. Um, but I, I think I, I, think I, I, I was asked, um, how is it that I convey uh, authority without ever taking off my helmet? And I, I think, I think that it's probably because I never take off my helmet, quite frankly. Uh, and it's also definitely because of good editing, because uh, especially when we were first, Dave and I were just talking uh, a little while ago about those first few episodes when we were trying to find um, the language of these characters, um, and Pedro knows this, when we were, when we were all helmeted and we were moving around in this new territory, these new sets, and and um, trying to see, especially through a through the frame of a camera, you know, when you're only seeing part of this character's body, you're not seeing the whole body. What is it that translates? What kind of movement are you are you reading? What emotions are you reading? And it was really a collaborative effort because I knew what was going on in my head, and what I quickly learned for the armor is that less is more. And you know, I remember definitely growing up, my father. Um, was a military man. He was in the army. He was six foot six. Um, very strong man. Very kind. Very loving. But the thing that was most frightening to me was when I had done something wrong, and I knew it. And I would go talk to my dad, and I I didn't I I knew he was going to say something about it, and I was just waiting for him to say it, and he said nothing at all, and he just looked at me. And I was just waiting for him to say the thing. And that was the most terrifying thing of all. And that was the thing that made me look in, inward and think, you know, have that self-reflection and think about what it was that I needed to learn and think about what it was that I needed to process and what I should have done differently. And I sort of think that that's, um, that's one of the ways that the armorer functions. Um, she doesn't say a whole lot, and she doesn't, I mean, except when she runs across some 
stormtroopers that need to be taught a lesson. She doesn't do a whole lot. Um, but she has yet, daddy issues, is what you're saying. I'm not saying anything. Less is more. Less is more. So, Emily, I, I can see that you're making up for lost time with uh, being silent. Um, uh. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to shift to Giancarlo. Tell us where we left off with the with the, the story, so that we can kind of get everybody up to speed as we start we're to all approach. Looking at me like she asked me a question or something. <laughs> we're looking past. Okay, oh, okay, great. Right, well, I'll first say, <laughs> <laughs> don't get scared. pleasure to be working with visionaries and I'll first say you know you have something I want <laughs> and what, what that is is passion for this franchise what that is is wonder and and, and uh, amazement at what's been happening I'm grateful to David Filoni I'm grateful to John Favreau and I'm grateful to Rick and Kathleen and Disney for having to allow me to be a part of this world if you're here, you love Star Wars. Yes. If you're here, you love Star Wars. Woo! 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 You love it. You ever thought about it? Great storytelling, great action, great characters who are involved in something that is real for a purpose. It is the hero and the heroine's journey that matters. It is that you can see yourself in the armorer. You can see yourselves in Mando. You can see yourselves in Moff Gideon. It is a wonderful place to be in this childlike wonder in this franchise. So I left off in this place of terror. I left off in this place of, of not knowing where Moff Gideon would go. I left off in a place of vulnerability. You had not seen Moff be vulnerable before. Wondering what is going to happen to me. This is a wonderful place to be, a wonderful springboard into season three. I'm grateful to be joining. I'm grateful to be here. And only you can supply yourself with the patience to find out what <laughs> <laughs> to these amazing guys for, for letting me do this and Kathleen and um, I'm so excited for you guys to see this season because I've seen it. It's crazy. <laughs> that's all I can say. That's legitimately all I can say. 
that's it. Because I always make a joke that like someone will swoop down and take me away and you'll never see me again. But they're here now, so I'll just fall off the stage. <laughs> so, look, we're all excited to be back here. Uh, we've got we got a lot of our cast here. We've got a room full of people who've been there from the beginning. The audience, the fans, thank you. And, and so, Victoria, what a great opportunity to bring something to show you, because we got everybody here.